Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, everyone. So, good morning and welcome, and thank you for being here for the third annual meeting of ReFashion, all the actors of the fashion industry. So, I think that you are 1,500 altogether, and welcome for being with us all day. So, today, all of the representatives of the sector are present. And this, our objective is to federate and accompany all of the players in production, uh, recycling, regeneration. Our objective is to reduce impact. Before presenting the program for the day, I'm going to give the floor, in fact, to the Minister for uh, Industry, Roland Lescure. He's He's not here, but he's with us Bonjour by video. Good morning. I'm extremely happy to be able to introduce this third uh, edition of ReFashion Day, even if it is on a remote basis. I would especially like to thank Maud Aldi and all of the teams that have contributed to the organization's success of this event. 2023, four years after the AGEC law, which has accelerated our production and consumption model so as to reach an objective, which is to put an end to waste. 2023 is also the opportunity for a first evaluation. We have achieved many uh, advances. For example, the uh, ban on destroying the unsold items, which allows us to avoid the destruction of 10 to 20,000 uh, pieces a day. You know that on an average, French are buying, French consumers are buying uh, lap, more clothing than uh, 15 years ago. So the challenge of fast fashion is one of the major challenges we have to face today. Today, only one out of 10 pieces of clothing is reused. The majority go to landfills in France or abroad. It's thus our collective duty to better orient purchases towards more lasting clothing that can be better recycled and which come from, in fact, uh, reuse and accessible to everyone and manufacturing in France as well. So we continue to work to uh, encourage the uh, sector to turn towards a secular uh, e economy. You know that the textile uh, sector has a fund of 154 million euros from 2023 to 2028, and the methodology for achieving this will be presented soon. This will enable consumers to be better informed about the impact of their choices. 2023 is a uh, turning point, which calls upon us to commit more strongly to this. The climate urgency is more and more at the center of the discussion. The government is working on new uh, restructuring approaches in terms of reuse and recycling at the national and European level. And the demand for proximity and sustainability by consumers is growing. All of these elements call for a transformation, an in-depth transformation of this sector. We have several levers to act. First of all, to uh, encourage eco-design, that is to say, the production of products which are, uh, last longer with fewer resources. Then we want to accompany new consumer uh, com behavior, more respectful of the citizens of the planet, informing the consumer on the choices that he has. But these two elements will not be enough uh, without the third essential one, which is the management of the end of life of products. Today, ReFashion collects 31% of products that have put on the market. The rest is reemployed, stored in cupboards, thrown into the uh, garbage or collected. These 31 percent very quickly will be 40, 50, 60 percent, and we have to ensure that they are not uh, carried away to the developing countries on uh, beaches uh, which are already littered. In order to put an end to this disaster, we must give you the capacity to valorize the sources of these textile waste in our territory by developing the recycling sector.
The recycling of textiles is a major challenge because the need for uh, solutions to manage the life cycle of these products is critical on a world scale. Only 13% today of textile waste is recycled. The other 87% finish in the landfill or in incineration. Today, we have actors in France, and we should be very proud. Last week, I visited Caillos in fact, near Clermont-Ferrand, which has given it, which has created the first line for the preparation of textile waste in the world. It will enable for old clothing production scrap to be, in fact, recycled. This shows the urgent need to develop the valorization of these wastes on an industrial level to put an end to the waste. It's good for the planet, it's good for our consumption mode, it's good for the consumer, and obviously it's good for employment and prosperity. I would like to thank all of you. I'm sure that the reflection that will take place here today will enable us to have a new uh, uh, offensive to put the fashion world into the circular economy. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. I think we can applaud his intervention here. I'd, as the minister has recalled, we are living a transition phase which is animated by the need to transfer our models and consumption mode. By its unique position in France, the uh, clothing and shoe sector is at the heart of this. So all of us together have to uh, commit ourselves to these ambitious objectives and accompany the sector to a 100% circular fashion. The minister has given figures on a world scale which are very alarming. I'll give you the figures for France. 260,000 tons collected of the 190,000 sorted by different uh, industrials. 60% are reused, 31% recycled, essentially in the automobile and construction sector. We then have 8% which is valorized for energy creation and the uh, rest is incinerated. It's clear that the transformation of our model is essential. The work has started with the implementation of new technical specs, which set very ambitious objectives in terms of reuse, repara repairing, and recycling. So all of us together must work on this. Today is going to bring keys to solutions that we can collectively implement. I would now like to present the topics of the day. This is the third refashion day. How do we build a tangible and desirable future for the clothing and shoe sector? This is a way of exchanging and look at the possible possibilities. We have We Demand, the media, which is in fact accompanying us today, and this in uh, for the uh, shareholders who are changing the world. I would like to invite Eloi, Eloi Choplin to join us. Eloi is the master of ceremony for today. Hello, Eloi. Hello. Eloi, would you like to say a few words here? Yes, and I would like to remind uh, them of their role here in Paris and uh, wherever they are, because you are going to be actors of all the exchanges. You can put questions, you can interact, uh, and uh, we will open uh, all the discussions to you. Don't hesitate in raising your hand. And remotely, you know, there there is a little box interactivity hall, and uh, in the box, therefore, called interactivity. I know it's on the chat, on the chat. So, for example, tell us on the chat where, where you're located and if you're uh, okay. So, we will already have an idea of the geographical distribution of people. So, you can write this in the chat. It is in the chat also. 
also that we can have an exchange. Maud, Maud, you asked me to talk about the program. Well, first of all, we will talk about re-enchanting uh, the uh, society of consumption. Then we'll look at the economy of regeneration or regeneration economics. This afternoon, resources, uh, also experimentations. So the menu is very, very rich. And uh, another thing, you have in fact, a hashtag also, so you can put a bit of intelligence on the social media. So let's push intelligence on the social media, uh, thanks to the hashtag. So I think that uh, this is what I can say concerning the program. Now, uh, the refashion team that is uh, here has a taken up a challenge, how to create uh, a, a, a person with uh, a um, with a uh, garment, in fact, uh, that includes uh, one part that has been reused or recycled or refashioned. And for you, well, this is the pyjama of my grandfather. The shoes are made in France, bleu blanc rouge, they're 20 years old. And a uh, little T-shirt that used to be white and beige, and that I dyed. And you? And you? Well, the rule was set up two two days ago, so I didn't have enough time. Uh, in fact, well, maybe next year then. Maybe next year. Would. Do you have a word starting with re? R e? Well, I will mention them this morning. The first one is uh, reunite, réunir, uh, to succeed, or reunion to succeed. So, in fact, uh, it is uh, for you uh, uh, in the box, interactivity, you can write your, your word starting with RE, and we can have a cloud of words starting with RE. So, uh, thank you, Maud. We can applaud Maud. So we're very lucky because here we can start these questions with something which is uh, very uh, invigorating, a discussion with a consultant who is a specialist in uh, frugal innovation. Good morning, Nadiv. Raju, you are on a remote basis, yes, of course, but I think that uh, if we look at the density of subjects that we are going to deal with today, is going to uh, make up for the distance between us. So we're going to go right to the heart of the subject. We propose that you work with three keywords so that we can better understand how uh, this frugal innovation can, in fact, uh, help the uh, clothing and shoe sector and how this can determine the future of this uh, sector. The first of the keywords was agileness. What can you say about agileness? Agileness, as we saw, uh, during the COVID, you know that uh, you have the sector in Brittany, in fact, which started working to produce a, uh, a masks, you know, uh, or we for COVID, you know that in Roubaix, you had hundreds of people who, in fact, were uh, working to produce masks as quickly as uh, possible. And today, in fact, you have a network of 400 workshops uh, throughout France. So this is agileness for me. It is the resilience, the creative resilience that we see in a time of crisis to change adversity into uh, into uh, opportunity and to create value. So to uh, propose this uh, spontaneous resilience, uh, and especially when we look at climate change today, when we talk of 
adaptation. In fact, for me, what's really important is to prove this possibility of creative resilience, which can be transformative. You know that a lot of people don't like this, but today we need to have really good practices, very concrete things to try to deploy the agileness in companies in our day-to-day -day life. Yes, of course, you have agileness at three levels. At the technological level, there's the process, and then this mindset as well, an agile mindset. So, you know, you know uh, Mr. Lescure spoke of eco-design, which is important. But, the, you know, when we talk of eco-design, we should also speak of co-design. Today, you have digital tools which enable you to do co-design with customers on a large scale. And here, you know, there are systems which allow the use of machine learning or internet or artificial intelligence, which is going to allow you to validate concepts for thousands of customers with prototypes, etc. And this so as the products really answer a need. You know, in the textile sector, we're very often in a push mode and you find end up having lots of products which are not sold uh, because don't respond to the market need. So I think the agileness allows us to answer demand. And with climate change, you know, we have to look at the uh, uh, transportation needs, the utilitarian need as well. You know, there are there's going to be a great deal of variability at the weather and climate level. So co-design integrated with eco-design is the first thing. Secondly, first tool. Second tool, automation. And a company that I admire a great deal in uh, uh, your sector is Chalieu near uh, Lyon, which has learned to uh, uh, do the automatic sorting of uh, collected used clothing. They have also worked on an eco design for textile packaging, and they are able to create a hybrid model which brings together the best image with best automation to uh, reconcile, in fact, this agileness. So it's, there's a real sharing. It's not neither all machine nor all human, all manual. Another keyword, which is central, when we talk about uh, frugal innovation, what about frugalness? What can you say about the word frugalness? Frugalness is not sobriety. It's not the same thing. You know that this is a word which has been brought to French awareness. Now, we know today that in the textile center sector you need to do more with less more water uh, less water less chemical products less uh, uh, emissions etc so when you start talking about less 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 things become very constraining and this is not necessarily easy so today for you know with sobriety you do need to do less but better and you know today our minds are cabled ever to more. But in fact, we need to be cabled in our minds to better. That is to say, to have a clothing which lasts longer. So the idea of frugalness and that frugal innovation, the idea is to try to balance that ecological need to do with less and the human need not to have more, but to have better. So the idea is to do better with less and there are different techniques for this uh, frugal innovation it can be recycling there's a whole toolbox that we you know regeneration there's a whole toolbox for this so what we're saying is that in france you know we have these cartesian 
in engineers who only see frugalness in terms of product. That's very limited. I think that frugal innovation will bear greater results, as the uh, minister said. In fact, we have to apply that frugalness throughout the value chain. What this means is that we can bring together the idea of producing on a mass scale and while, as, while having a decentralized type of selling, we can scale up and scale done. So, in fact, have workshops throughout France so as to mobilize production in a very variable manner. And so, you know, uh, there is a large textile recycling factory in Mayenne, which is going to recycle 40 million pieces of clothing per year. So upstream at the value chain, you'll have a lot of recycled textiles that scale up. Then you want to scale out. What this means is that with numerous decentralized workshops throughout France, you would have these workshops capable of using these recycled textiles to produce uh, products in smaller volumes so as to be able to satisfy a varying local demand. So this implies involving the entire value chain to do better with us, to have beautiful products, offering more comfort to the human being while limiting the number of resources that need that are needed for this. So from scale up to scale out, I imagine that this is a in-depth uh, change in corporate culture. Is there a good practice for this to try to deploy that uh, change of culture? I think that the change of culture is embodied by leaders. For example, Charlier, which uh, is a uh, with Eric Bouet. In fact, this is the in fact Perma Industry. This is a, a these are uh, leaders uh, in the industrial world, whether there are SMIs or SMEs, and so it's a question of seeing how you can. Uh, recognize this approach where you do less, you do better with less. So this is a culture that has to be integrated. It's not a method. It's not a good practice. It's not a toolbox. But the, it's a question of mindset. And especially in France, we need to have leaders. We need to have examples, exemplary leaders. And so the role of the leaders is to embody this this frugalness, and to set the tone, in fact, uh, of this frugal culture. Obviously, this has to be accompanied by uh, a will and determination, because you can't impose it. But you have a new generation entering the working world, and these people are going to be, uh, if you like, frugal natives. And I think that here you have a uh, labor force, which is maybe enlightened, enlightened here. But you need to have the right incentives, in fact, to change mindsets. And remember, the problem is always to start at the top. But with the textile industry, you know, we're working with the SMEs, SMIs. And so the transformation of the textile industry in France is going to take place at the economic structure of territories. I think big brands will have will take more time to come to this, but as soon as the this starts to change, it will create a kind of tsunami. Well, there's something which might surprise. 
the key word inclusion. Can, what can you say about inclusion? Inclusion is a word with four or five dimensions. The dimension that is dear to my heart because I come from a southern country. This is the figure which is going to scandalize you, but you need to know that two-thirds of French people cannot buy uh, hygienic hygiene products because they're too expensive. Now, for the country that created perfumes, this is unacceptable. So so how do we make things accessible? When we talk about frugal, when I started working on that topic, frugal, 10, 15 years ago, it was how do you develop frugal products, which means that are affordable. But when we, and this with the frugalness, with frugal, uh, you want products to be uh, inclusive, that is to say, at an affordable price. If you create lasting products which are too expensive, well, this will not be for the population at large. So the first dimension of inclusion is to make products inclusive, that is to say, affordable for the consumer so that they reconcile the concepts of end of the world and end of the month. Uh, and as far as uh, refashion is concerned, here, when we talk about inclusion, you have to see how uh, you uh, are going to allocate and uh, your resources. How do you pool them? You know, when we talk about recycling, how can we have that sharing? So, in fact, you have a book on the revolution of uh, sharing. The, uh, in fact, B2B sharing. So how do we share the resources? We start with the waste. Then you need the industrial capacity. It can be premises, equipment, etc. It can be the pooling together of purchasing power. In the textile sector, you know, uh, you need to have uh, the, for example, you have companies, three companies in the textile sector which have invested together. So you mutualize your purchasing power. It implies sharing customers, sharing employees. This is a sharing of skills, which is something that is developing more and more, and this uh, with uh, digital platforms. And there's also the sharing of the intellectual aspect. If we look at gene manufacturers, Levi Strauss, they've developed technology to reduce the their water consumption by 75%, and then they shared the patents on an open source basis with other companies so as to enhance the environmental performance of the entire sector. So this is another uh, definition of inclusion. How can you have companies working together on an ecosystem basis to share to pool resources to create and share solutions. Now, uh, I now would like to say that the third uh, aspect of inclusion is how to cooperate with partners uh, that are atypical for the sector, like academics, etc. Because this is going to give you access to new applications for your products. So I'm in Lyon, which is the silk capital. And you know that the silk activity is reorganizing itself in a spectacular way so as to be able to use silk in other sectors than textiles. In the biochemical sector, the silk industry in Lyon is reinventing itself to find uses in the agro-food sector, health, cosmetics, and even in the aeronautics sector. So for me, inclusion is how you can include partners, academics, scientists, researchers, or experts in other industries to try to uh, broaden your impact. So at the same time, you can uh, go deeper into the impact here, but you can also see how this impact is going to include atypical partners. So for me, that is another aspect of inclusion. Thank you, Nadif. It's terrible because in fact, we'd like to talk with you for uh, hours, but I have a clock in front of me and I have the time it's frugal, yes. So I see that I'm in the red already. So one word, one word. Give me a word in R, in R. 
starting with R. Reconcile. Reconcile. End of the month, end of the world. Reconcile uh, sustainability and uh, end of life, end of life uh, products, uh, and also beauty and affordability. Thank you, Nadi. Thank you very much.